Hi, I'm Kat, and today I'm showing you how to make this miniature bonsai tree. I used the same clay that I used in the last video, and I made a small oval, attached that to another strip of clay the same, uh, the same thickness, and made a larger oval. Then I used some additional clay to build a wall. Bake it. And then don't worry too much about the seams on the inside. Um, that's going to get covered up later but you can use some additional clay to fill in the gaps and then to add feet at the bottom and then bake this in place again. You're finished with the pot for right now. And then I use some jeweler's wire. This is just some simple uh, a roll of wire I picked up at Michael's for like $2 and twist that in place. This is 12 pieces of roughly the same size wire. It does vary in size. Um, and that's because of the branch thicknesses. You would like to be able to taper it off. And then I twist it into four groups of three for the branches and three groups of four each for the root system. And I make sketches of everything that I get ready to make in miniature. So this is the sketch for the bonsai. I have four main branches and three side branches and each one has a platform on it that's going to attach the rest of the greenery. So I shaped with some pliers the tree trunk to kind of replicate the shaping in the drawing and then I made the additional side branch using six pieces of wire. You can stick the wire into the main branch of the tree trunk or you can even glue it in place. It doesn't make a difference. Um, the clay that you put on top of this is going to secure it uh, the, the, the most. Then I made sure it would fit in the pot and trim the roots and any additional branches. Then I added some scrap clay at the bottom and that's just going to be to hold it in place and then a khaki colored clay for the tree trunk itself. I just put a large blob on there and smoothed it down into the roots underneath the, uh, the tree and up along the branches and then I used the blade to cut off any excess. Then I baked it. And then I use additional clay in the same tree trunk color to continue to cover the branches, the roots, and the tree. Don't worry too much about texturing just cover the wires and by covering the wires most of the time you will find that you were um, actually texturing this tree and giving it the look of real branches. Just use thin strips of the clay to cover the wires up with it. and just continue to add more clay until you've covered all the wires of the tree. You can also take some additional pieces of wire and stick those into the wet clay at the top if you need some additional um, smaller branches. You might want to use a little TLS to secure it though, but just stick them in and cover them with clay. Then I baked this and then made the gravel by using white clay that I scraped off into the little chunks the same way I made my gravel in my aquarium video.
I also added in some light gray pieces, baked them, and then broke them up a little bit with my fingers. Then added those in with some glue. And this is just regular Mod Podge in the mat. And then layered that on top of the scrap clay and along the bottom of the trunk in my pot. Being careful not to completely cover your roots. And then I use organza. This is from an organza bag. Any color will do, but I happen to have some white. So I used the white instead. I really wanted it to blend in. And then I cut that into small, organic, irregular shapes. So circles, blobs, oblong, uh, ovals, just things of that sort. And I glued that to the platforms on the branches. Or that I glued these platforms onto my branches. And let those sit for a bit while they dry. And then while they were drying, I went on ahead and painted my pot. I used the same stippling technique that I used in the bonsai. Uh, I'm sorry, in the sushi and sake video as well. So there's beige at the middle, brown at the bottom, aqua at the top, and then I use the same beige and brown to add highlights to my tree trunk and branches. And then onto the greenery, I use fresh moss again. This is found at the side of a house. Um, on tree trunks, on live trees, on rocks, on the ground, usually at the base of the trees and the roots, uh, things of that sort. Just look around and you can find some fresh one or of course you can purchase it, but I do prefer the look of fresh moss. The color variation is, is much stronger. It's not been dyed and it's not dead. And then of course you can take the same moss and mulch it with scissors. And then I added in a few drops of resin, just enough to make it clump together. If your moss is a little dry, you might want to reconstitute it by putting it in some water and then drying it on a paper towel for a little bit of time, like 30 minutes will, take, will do it. It just needs to drain slightly. And then I began to pile the, uh, the mulched moss on top of my platforms of organza. The platforms are fairly sturdy, they'll hold the moss, but if it starts to drip, don't worry too much about it. You can just stop adding and you can cut off the excess organza. And then I allowed that to cure and then I added more moss onto the bottom of the organza. Being careful to still allow the branches to show. Allow that to dry upside down. And then if you need to add some additional at the top, you can. I certainly did. And this is a completed bonsai. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.